You just turned this. Okay, now, <laughs> this, this part is easy, right? Hey, you know, it kills me. Yeah, that would crush the baby now. Some you women actually have sex in this condition, don't they? Well. I mean, you know, it, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like a very attractive idea to me. But, you know. What, well, no. <laughs> what are chitlins? Oh, good. Hogs, guts? Yeah. Now, if you say they ain't good, there's something wrong with your tummy. Uh, this is different. It is different. I got the class and had it made. And so I stayed the rest of my life. I could never do that. I could do that. One of the most memorable shows we ever did was uh, we televised the birth of a baby at home. And <clears throat> she was she she was in the uh, bedroom of the apartment where the doctor was at hand. Their little four-year-old son, Ben, ran around the room, and as she pushed and pushed, the little kid said, Kid, mm, it's a puppy. Mommy, it's a puppy. <laughs> the program that caused the most controversy, the most comment, the most press attention, the most hysteria was the Donahue program on which I wore a skirt. You, you hate this. I hate it. You hate it. Why do you hate it? I don't know. You look odd. I do? Yeah. You don't look like Phil Donahue at all. What? Your butt, your butt looks great Thanks in that dress. Much. 220 shows a year, you picked this one to come. Yeah, I, uh, what do you think? Uh, I... It's not you. <laughs> Over the years, we've met many extraordinary people, courageous and determined. But perhaps no guest was more inspiring than little Susie Solomon, born without arms or legs. She came back on our show 20 years later, looking for a job, and our viewers responded. I'm pleased to welcome Suzanne Solomon back to our program. And yes, since she last appeared, you got a job. Yes. Well. There is a God. Uh, <laughs> Susie Solomon now works in Cincinnati for a company that helps people with disabilities to live on their own. Uh, April is 10. No, almost 10. You're almost 10. You're going to be 10. Danny? 16. You're 16. Progeria is an extremely rare disease that causes premature aging. These children taught us a valuable lesson. When kids... Um, make fun of me. I just act like they're not there. It doesn't really bother me that much. The last thing you want is any pity, I'll bet you. Exactly. Tell me about that. I don't need any. You don't want people to feel sorry for you. Not at all. Are you there? Go ahead, caller. Yes, I'm here. Call-ins are a very important part of our program. We once produced an hour on mothers who, suffering from severe postpartum depression, killed their infants. In the middle of the program, we got a call I'll never forget. I, I, have a, I have a baby right now, and she's five months old, and I'm not sure what to do. I'm 17 years old, and I'm living at home with my parents. I'm waiting to get married to her father, but I have to wait till I'm out of school. And sometimes I just feel like things would be better if she wasn't around. I love her dearly, and I'm just I'm so torn up inside. I don't know what to do. Can, you can hear me, right? Yeah. Fine. Uh, and you're home alone right uh, now, is that right? Yes, with my baby. Uh-huh. Um, I would like to keep you on the line so that we can uh, chat with you off the air. This is hardly the place to be discussing something this complicated. I'm happy to report that today the young caller and her baby are both fine. In 1987, as an infant languished near death, his parents came on our show to appeal for a heart donor. 
It was our most exciting moment. At 10 o'clock this morning, as we speak, it's 9.40 Eastern, there will be a press conference at your hospital. Yes. At which what will be revealed? Uh, we are donating a heart to the baby in Loma Linda, California. All right, there is nothing else. Have, uh, obviously, you've been in touch with Loma Linda. Yes. So Loma Linda is prepared to receive this organ? Yes. So this surgery could take place today? It is. Scheduled to take place today. Goodbye. We're going. It has went. While Phil was shocking us out of our complacency, he was also providing a farm for the victims of this intolerance. Some voices on his show shouted their outrage. Some cried out in pain. What follows is some of the roughest speech shocking in the land of free speech. I don't believe blacks are discriminated against. Oh. Now hold it, hold it. Wait, she wait said she doesn't believe that blacks are discriminated against. No, I don't. Can you, can you imagine somebody making that statement? Yes, I am. I don't believe they're discriminated against. Well, yes, blacks. We tell you, you don't tell us. I didn't say you shouldn't like me. You're getting crazy. You're all off the subject.